Okay, now we're going to be looking at histograms. Now remember we are all about representing data here and we had previously looked at a bar or double graph and the thing we noticed about a bar graph, it had gaps in it. And now we're going to look at histograms. And before the end of this lecture, or by the end of this lecture, we're going to fill in a picture there to explain what a histogram is. This, remember, is a great way to represent data, make it viewable. So now previously, we had a bar graph and now we have histograms. Now, what is the difference between the two? The first thing to remember, and this is the thing that I always used when I was at school, a bar graph has gaps and a histogram have no gra gaps. You'll notice that there's gaps over there and there's no gaps there. And I always like to rem remember, there are no gaps in history. And this little saying was a nice one that always reminded me the fact that hist histograms never had gaps and bar graphs had gaps. Another difference is the fact that histograms use ranges continuous instead of categories for bins, right? So here we have a category where summer, autumn, winter, spring is the bin. And what I say when bin, I mean this group here that represents the data. For example here, we have our class marks, our mass class marks. This 10 here would be the bin from 0 to 10. This bin here would be from 11 to 20. This bin here would be 21 to 30. Right, these bins are continuous. It goes all the way from 0 to 50. There are no categories. Right, so that's another important thing. So if we were to try and put a histogram like a bar graph with the seasons, it would not work. This is not technically allowed for histograms because it is not continuous, although there are no gaps in it. it it's not often used for categories, but rather for ranges. A time is a very frequent one. There we had marks at the bottom, but often they use it for time. So what data set is this graph here representing? Either A, B, C, or D, right? So let's have a look at this graph. We have our class mass marks, and this is the frequency of how many students got a mark between 0 and 10, 11 and 20, uh, 31, uh, 21 and 31, or 30, 31 and 40, and 41 to 50. So the max mark was 50. This will be 50 and this will be 0. So let's look at the frequency for bin 10. 14. Oh, we can immediately see that it was not 14. There were only two people who got that. That is not it. Let's have a look at B. 2. Yeah, oh, that looks right. It's on 2. Um, who was in the 10 to or the 11 to 20 bin? These could be written as 0 to 10, 11 to 20. 21 to 30, 22, oh, sorry, 31 to 40, and 41 to 50. That's a 31 to 40. So it doesn't matter what mark they got in there, but we're categorizing the students into these bins. So did they get 9? Oh, it looks like it's on 8. I don't think that'll work. Uh, the bin 30 is 8. It's less. No, there's clearly more here, so it's not this one. Let's look at um, option C. We have this bin with 5. No, we can see that's not going to be 5. That's not going to work. D, uh, there's bin 10. Let's just check this. It's 2. That's right. 20 is 8. That looks right. Then we have 9, 14, and 5. That looks about perfect. So kind of questions we could be asked when we look in histograms. How many students are in total in the class? Can you work it out from this? How many students there are in the class? Yes, of course we can. It's the total frequency for each of the bins. If we know that two students got between 0 and 10, eight students got between 11 and 20, we just need to add each of these bins up to get the total amount of students. So the total amount of students were 2 plus 8 plus 9 plus 14 plus 5. And this is equal to 19, that's 36, uh, 38. Students in your class. That sounds about right. Here's a more tricky question. Let's answer this question. Did more people in the class pass or fail? So you would have got 25 if you passed or 25, less than 25 if you failed. Right, so we know that this is 
31, um, 21 to 30. We don't know what the students got in here. They could have got anything. So we're going to say that if they got 25, they would have passed. So let's count how many students are here. Here we know there's 14 plus, um, what do we have, 5. So we know there's 19 students here. Here we know there's 2 plus 8. There's 10 students here. So it looks like more students passed than failed. But what about these students? We don't know whether they passed or failed. If we ask the question, did more students in the class get 20 instead of 25, then we can say, yes, it's quite clear that more students got 25, um, 20 than, than less than 20. But to say 25, can we work it out? We know that there are uh, nine students here. And what if, by some chance, all nine of those students got 21? They would all be less than 25, and hence all four on this side. And then we have 19 and 19. And it would be impossible to say. So you can write here, it is impossible to say. But don't rely on a question like this being so obscure. Rather, just make sure you understand the process of figuring out what these histograms mean. Well done, we can now add our histogram to our box here.